Okay, now we have horse, cat, and we need dog. So here are, here is a drawing of the dog. A dog's face is going to be a little more, a little more triangular. So I'm going to make the dog's face first. I'm going to make it a, a little bit of an angle. So think of almost like a triangle that has rounded edges. Okay. And we are going to go ahead and put our nose way down at the bottom here. So the cat's is a little bit different because if you remember, it was up a little higher. So it's kind of like the trapezoid shape. If you want to put, if you do it a little bigger and you put the little nostrils in there, you can do that. Okay, and this mouth, I'm just going to almost put like an upside down Y. Okay. There we go. And the chin comes down a little bit like that. Okay. For the dog's eyes, we're going to have the dog's eyes kind of come, it, it doesn't have to come all the way up from here, but we're going to put the dog's eyes a little bit slanted to get that to look like it's the dog face. Okay, a little bit. And think of those human eyes again. Now a little bit of an eyebrow. Okay. And now the ears. So think about like how the top of the head does this and we're going to come out and this one looks like a lab. So this one has ears that are going to come down like this and then back up. Okay, so you're going to kind of come down a little bit and look at the ear picture of your dog and you're going to be able to see like what the ears look like. Okay, now body again, bring it right from the head and it's very, very similar to the cat. We're going to bring that down. Okay, we're going to make our paw and we're going to think about that flat line that we're going to have everything come to. So the dog's tail is going to be a little bit different than the cat's tail. Little paw. And then we're going to have that line for the back kind of would come down from here. So the ears in the way a little bit. We're going to bring it down and a little less, a little less of a roundness. Like the cat had quite a roundness to it. Okay. Um, this is the cat that we did together. So this one's a little bit less. It's going to come down a little bit more. Okay. And... Even if you did more roundness to it, it would be absolutely fine. Your tail is not going to curl as much. So we're going to have to bring it up. And then, you know, if you even wanted to have it be like, okay, I'm going to show a little bit of fur in there. You absolutely could do that. Okay. And then we're going to bring that little doggy paw. It's back leg in like that. And then you've got that dog as well okay and right now we're seeing one paw that's in it's on the one side okay if you wanted to draw another paw kind of coming in here you could you could draw this where the back leg was kind of in front of that one okay so now this one the same thing you're going to separate some space how do you want to separate it um you know sometimes there's kind of like some little fun little uh, details that you can make on it. And think about what Laurel Birch does. So our next step, I'm going to use these three drawings and we're going to think about like what we're going to do to make this kind of resemble Laurel Birch. So think about when you listen to the beginning of the video. 
What are some characteristics in her artwork that you noticed that would make you think, hey, this looks like a Laurel Birch piece if you were in the store um, looking around or if you actually did go to an art gallery and see her work? What are some things that would make you say, this really looks like Laurel Birch? I can kind of recognize some things. So one thing is patterning. Another thing is outlining. Okay, so think about your, your piece and how you can outline the outside of the whole piece. Okay, and you might want to do more than one dog or more than one horse. Okay, so we're going to have this really nice outline around the entire thing. So we've got this whimsical version of this animal, right? And it's very stylistic. It's really not realistic. We're going to keep it simple. We are going to decorate it. We're going to outline it. And we're going to put some patterns in it. So we've got to find areas to put the patterns in. All right, so I'm going to do some of these patterning. And I'm going to actually do in here, I'm going to outline some of these too. So I'm kind of making that a little thicker line. I might want to make this a little thicker. Okay, something like that. Okay, and I'm going to go down with this. Okay, so within these spaces, think of what you can do for your patterns. You could do um, circles. You can do shapes. You could do a pattern of shapes. Okay. You could do a floral. So those are flowers, you know, maybe you wanna do some neat little spring one since it's spring and you might wanna do something like that. Um, lots of different things, um, zigzags. Anything you can think of in your, um, I always say your pattern bucket. Okay. So you got circles, okay. Now I'm gonna break up some of this space. So I'm gonna actually try, um, I'm gonna try some stars in, in moons, I think. So I'm gonna do this kind of like celestial thing. So, Right here, I'm gonna put a nice big crescent moon. And I'm just gonna make a little sleepy moon. Okay, and I'm gonna do some stars. And I'm gonna make them pretty big. themes that would be really cool like this one is moon and stars uh, you know I've had I had lots of different things to be done before the American flag uh, stars and stripes you know that would be kind of a cool thing and it doesn't have to be throughout the entire thing by the way so think to yourself like if you wanted to do some here that was your moon and stars 
And then like on this side, maybe you wanted to do something different. I'm going to do some kind of wavy lines. And maybe I'll carry my, um, some of my triangles over here. And think about different sizes. If they're all the same size, it might be boring. Think about what you can do to create interest. Maybe you just want an edge to something. So I go around this line that I have here where I have everything, everything's outlined. So I'm just gonna kind of go around this line and I'm gonna make a little zigzag pattern. Okay, and you wanna stick to some of the same ones. So, you know, you might wanna do some sort of pattern over here that, that repeats what you have over here. So, you know, maybe you want something a little different, although it's nice in your artwork to repeat, creates a rhythm in your artwork. You look from one place to another to help balance, helps balance your piece. Okay, so I'm going to try a few dots in here also because I kind of like the idea of doing something with a little, with a little, okay, maybe in between these I'll do some dots. And then I'm going to carry it over to the main a little bit. Okay, and I'll do some of this. Let's see, right here. So now I have this pretty full drawing of this horse that has my outline. So I have an outline in it. I have some broken space. Okay, I have some patterns, some different patterns in it. And I have a really stylistic version of that simplistic horse. Okay, so this is what we're gonna use as our, um, the center of our picture. One thing that we do need to think about is a lot of times Laurel Birch will have a border around her drawing and I would like to see that border around it so you're practicing at first and again the border is the same kind of idea you might have an outline so these lines would be outlined and then within that border you have some sort of design and this time I think I'm going to make dots. Just these kind of whimsical circular dots. And I got them all going the same size. Maybe I want to vary some. There we go. Just gives it a little more interest when you vary some things. And maybe some swirls in that that little area that's my outlined area. Okay. So this is just an idea about what you could do for a finished piece. <laughs> 